All right, what's up, fellas? It's Mark Parson, cornerback pro, former NFL cornerback of the Houston Texans and the New Orleans Saints. And now I'm coaching you guys up all over the world. Thanks for coming to the channel. Today we're going to go over DB 101s, guarding a specific route, the dig route, playing off man. All right, you're going to see D1A talent right here. As a matter of fact, this clip is from dp 2 Nice. So follow him on Instagram. First of all, he played at a high level, and he's giving tips on this route from a, uh, a receiver standpoint, right? So I'm posting it, giving tips on a DB perspective, and that's how we get, that's how we get better, man. The more we know. So I want you guys to understand ball, because I know once you understand it, you're gonna move faster. You're gonna move. You're gonna play at a higher level. That's my goal for all of you guys. All right. Email me if you have any questions. My email is cornerbackpro at gmail.com. Um, definitely get the one-on-one -on -one mastery program. So ask me for that. Ask me for the one-on-one -on -one mastery program. I'm going to include everything else in there. It's crazy value. Let's get into it. I'm going to show it the clips first. So we're going to show the f everything first, and then we're going to go over it. So one thing you will notice, man, from like youth to the high school to college and then pro, every, or first of all, everybody gets got sometimes, right? So understand that. That's part of the game, especially in one-on-ones. There's no pressure on the quarterback. You know, we got time. It's basically two-on-one, and that's okay. That's how we sharpen our skills. But as you go to the higher level, you're going to notice there is a small window for error as a DB for sure. Look how close the guys are to them. It's not like they're getting roasted, right? You know what I mean? So, and let me go ahead and go back. So what I'm saying is these tips are really, the tips that I'm giving are really helping guys all over the world because it's a game of inches. And as you go to the higher, the highest level, you, you're you going to see guys are all over guys. I mean, I'm guard, I remember guarding Marcus Colston, and I'm literally all over him. And he still, Drew Brees puts it in a perfect spot and Colson is long enough to, you know what I'm saying? So these little tips are going to help you uh, excel, especially in high school, man, especially in college. It's the little tips that's going to help you get better. So that's what my, my goal is for you. All right. I'm going to go to the other angle. All right. So first, using one-on-ones, all right, so let's uh, look at the split. Number one. Be about seven to nine yards off. Can't. Don't be at 10. Don't be at 11. Be at least like seven to nine. I'll say around there, okay? Don't be at five. Don't be at six because then you're in what? No man's land. Don't think you're going to guard somebody off man, especially, you know, like backpedaling from five to six yards. If You don't want to be in the middle, all right? So make sure you get a feel for, you know, where you're on the field. So if you're going to be up, you're going to be pressed. If you're going to be off, you're going to be seven to nine yards off. You're not going to be in between. So that's number one. Now, leverage. So let's talk about leverage. So most likely the split in one-on-ones, he's going to be, he doesn't even necessarily have to be super wide, <clears throat> but most likely we're going to be what? One yard inside. So let's say we're eight, seven to nine yards off, one yard inside. So our leverage is we're playing inside man, basically, right? Unless he got a tight split. If he has a tight split, I recommend outside shade, but right here we're inside shade. So that's number one. So on this dig route, once you get your 10,000 reps, you're going to start to do what? You're going to start to recognize how these guys run routes, especially if you're going against the same guys, you know, on your team. So pay attention to that. That's why we study film when we're watching other guys run their routes. So how does he run the dig? You should watch hundreds of clips of this guy, your opponent running a certain route, okay? You should watch hundreds of routes <clears throat> in film of your opponent running every single route. So how do they run it? Some guys run their routes differently, right? All right. <clears throat> so leverage. We want to maintain this leverage right here as best as we can. On this dig route, he's trying to cross the face. So he's going to stem inside. So what does stem mean? Basically, he's trying to get inside. So he, sometimes, especially if they run like a circus route or something like that, they immediately just go. But what we want to do is we want to weave. So I have a video talking about weaving. All right. So you want to be careful not to necessarily turn your butt. 
We want to stay square in our weave. So usually college guys and NFL guys know how to weave correctly because obviously we have higher, you know, we have more time to get better and got coaching. In high school, first thing I do when I'm training my guys, when I'm teaching my guys, I see when, I, when we start to weave, immediately either they don't know how to weave or what it means or they turn their butt, which creates some separation. You want to stay square, so do not turn your butt when you're weaving, okay? Um, but the point of the weave is to maintain our inside leverage or outside leverage, whatever we're doing. Right here is inside leverage. So to maintain this, we need to weave inside. He's trying to cross our face. Let's watch what happens. All right, so we can go back. All right, so that's what I want to say. Just make sure you maintain your leverage as best as you can, all right? Now, on this clip, he does a decent job of uh, working to maintain his leverage. He turns his butt a little bit, but um, he does a decent job of that. Now, here's where he messed up on his back pedal when we come out of a break. And this is where I say, I'm telling you, if you look at my channel, I talk about how to break, right? All right, so on this break, we raise up, okay? I'm a, high, I'm a strong believer in staying low. You know, that was one of the biggest things that Prime taught me. Deion Sanders is taller than me, and he stayed lower than me when we first started. I'm 5'9", okay? You got to stay low out of your breaks. How do you do that? Well, we need to work on our breaks. So you got the box break drill, right? So that's in the one-on-one -on -one mastery program. You got the box break drill. You cycle your arms and you tuck your chin. If you raise up, it's gonna be harder to make this break, fellas. So you need to stay low. You need to stay low in your back pedal. You need to stay low in your transition. You need to stay low out of your brakes. So technically, this guy did all right right here. <clears throat> Just came too high on our brakes. And make sure our eyes don't go on that quarterback. Make sure our eyes are glued to him first. We get to him first. Inside breaking routes, sometimes we can get a bad habit of, um, Looking at the quarterback first. All right. All right. So now, so we talked about inside leverage. Now, what you're going to notice, fellas, when we're playing off man, these guys are not reading the quarterback drop. And you're like, well, coach, dad. see, I'm just telling you, you're playing blind. You're playing blind when you're not reading the drop, man. Look at the NFL clips that I show you. Most of the NFL clips. All right, the cornerback is reading his cues. He's reading the drop. Now look at these guys. The eyes are glued on him the whole time. So what does that make you want to do? Think about it. When your eyes are glued to the receiver the whole time, like from the beginning, since you're playing blind, you're not going to take these read steps that you're supposed to take because you're like, oh, shoot, speed, speed, speed. And you're going to get into a backpedal, an immediate backpedal. And guess what? You guys remember when I told you if you don't read the three-step or five-step drop, you'll never make a play on a, on, a, on a quick game? So you'll never make a play on this slant or this fire out or this hitch? You won't make a play. Well, guess what? If you don't read the three-step or five-step and take your read steps, you'll never make a play on an intermediate route. Maybe a comeback, right? But here's the thing. That's usually when you're guessing, okay? So when you're guessing, but that's when you're guessing, you kind of, you're not bust, bursting out of your transition. That's when you get run by. So it does mess up everything else. You won't make a play on this dig because you're going to get out of there too fast because you're going to immediately feel speed. All right? So you need to take these two read steps. Most likely, most likely, you're not going to take these two read steps if you're not reading the quarterback drop. Your, your eyes are just glued on the uh, receiver too early. So how does it work? Let me tell you how it works. You're seven to nine yards off. This is the progression. Your eyes are on the quarterback. You're going to see if he runs the three steps. So you can counter to your head. You're going to take two read steps. You're going to say one, two, three. If it's a five-step drop, which this dig route will be, most likely it's a five-step drop. It's an intermediate pass, right? Then your eyes are going to snap back to the receiver, and now your eyes are glued to him. What I'm seeing for my young guys in high school they do the exact opposite. So what happens is, at the very beginning, you're looking at the receiver. When this guy makes his break, then your eyes snap back to the quarterback. That's the exact opposite 
of how it's supposed to be. Okay? So you must read. You got to get in the habit of reading this quarterback drop. You're doing yourself a disservice not doing it. Because, look, these guys are getting into immediate backpedal. It's hard. I'm telling you, it's hard to make a play when you're playing blind. Now, notice this about college guys. This is D1A, fellas. Notice how everybody is finishing high school, guys. Now, I would say arrive just a tad bit more violently when it comes to the ball. That was a good job. Because you can still get this ball out. Yo, grab a wrist, grab a hand, strike for the ball. Don't swipe for the ball, but strike for the ball. Play through his hands. But notice how these college, these D Division One A guys are finishing. So what will happen usually in my high school guys, right here, they'll just give up. <laughs> you just kept, they just, oh, he caught it on me. Oh, okay. They don't tag off. They don't go for the, the rip. Nothing. So I just want to show you. Look how these D1A guys are finishing. But it was those small tips. Maintaining your leverage. Now it's a good route. Good job by the corner maintaining his leverage. Looks like his good eyes right here. Kind of settles his feet instead of breaking. But it's difficult because he gives a little outside jab. So I get it. I mean, this is pretty good coverage right here. Go for the rip. But I want to show you. You're getting into a media back pedal. You see what I'm saying? Take your two re steps. You're gonna be, you're gonna be closer to the receiver. So when he does that break, you're gonna be right there. Then it's all about how good your breaks are. And I, you know, I've given you guys three tips on how to break faster. So obviously work on that box break drill. You know, that's man, that's gonna get your feet right. Then cycle your arms and your break, and make sure you tuck your chin and make sure your eyes are in the right place. So, those are some tips that are gonna help you guard this dig route, man. Maintain your leverage, right? So if you start inside, do your best to maintain your leverage by weaving. Do not turn your butt when you weave. So you're not if you want to weave to the right, you don't turn your whole butt to the to the right. You want to stay square as you're weaving, right? If you don't know how it looks, I mean, I'll make more videos on it, but I got one already. But you want to practice that. So maintain your leverage. What well, he's He's trying to get in that inside leverage. He's trying to cross your face so when he breaks, he can create separation. Right? So maintain your leverage. Make sure you read the quarterback drop and take your two read steps. Even in a shuffle, our shuffle technique, we always take two shuffles in our shuffle technique where your hips are already open. But some coaches don't some coaches don't like backpedaling. Like I know Coach Gibbs, when I was with the Texans, didn't like backpedaling. When I was with the Saints, the coach didn't care. Matter of fact, everybody backpedaled. So it depends where you are. Either way, you're still going to read the quarterback drop. You're still going to read the quarterback's drop. It's going to help you. And then just know where you're supposed to be looking at. And then, you know, make sure your feet are good. Coming out of that break and then cycle your arms. Tuck your chin. It's going to take you to the ball, man. All right, fellas. Get the ball out. So, fellas, every day, man, you should have a goal of how many turnovers you're going to get, how many takeaways you're going to get, how many times you're going to get the ball in your hands. You guys want to get recruited. You guys want to get scouted. You want to play at the highest level. DBs, you got to score. <laughs> you got to get the ball out. You got to create takeaways, and you need to score. Have that mindset. How many touchdowns are you going to score today? Right? How many times are you going to get the ball out today? How many picks are you going to get? How many turnovers? What are you going to do to create takeaways? We're talking about the turnover ratio uh, with my young fellas yesterday when I was outside teaching them. Guys, turnover ratio. How many takeaways can you create to help your team? All right. That's a huge stat, man. If you can do this, you'll play at the highest level. How do you do it? Hey, first of all, your technique got to be right, and you got your football IQ has to be on another level. And then you work on it, you know, agilities and getting out of breaks and getting stronger, faster, all that good stuff. All right. All right, fellas, stay tuned for the next video. Email me at cornerbackpro at gmail.com. Ask for the one on one mastery so you can lock these dudes down. I'll include mind and body training and all that other good stuff. 
peace.